All right, good day and welcome back. So we're looking at slices in our previous um, chapter and we talk about what a slice is and we look at how you create slices. So fast forward a little bit. And so in this section, what we're gonna look at is how you iterate um, over a slice or iteration with for loop in the range function. And we're gonna see the built-in function just like the length function that we've seen for calculating the length of an array and um, a slice. And if you finish chapter three, where we look at array, you'll see that how we can do iteration over um, a array with for and range. And it's gonna be the exact same for a slice because remember, slices behave just like array, or of course, because they have an underlying array is one, but two, they're meant to replace how you use array and not to use, give you all the benefits of array with none of the drawbacks. So nothing really changed. So let's go ahead and play with using slices and array. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start here with the quote from section one in chapter four, where we look at creating slices. And so you can see we create our slices and we're able to re-slice them and print it out and so on. And so now I'm going to use this exact same code and I'm gonna say what we're doing now is iterating over slices, right? Iteration uh, using you know, for loop and range function, right? The range built-in function. So I'm not gonna change this. We already have a slice with some data and I'm not gonna worry about splitting this um, down this way because it doesn't really matter. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna take out most of these. And what I'm gonna say is let's revisit again, once again, how you do a for loop. So if you remember, a for loop sort of builds on an if statement. So you have if and you have condition and then you have the statement that you want to execute if the condition is true. And we said, oh, well, what if we can keep doing things while this condition is true? And somehow here, within here, we adjust the condition to become false. And the way Go does that is with the for statement. And you can optionally give the initial conditions, like we can initialize i to be equals to zero. i is less than the length of our slice here, which is nums. And then I plus plus, which means if I first assign I to be zero, this is gonna occur once. The very next thing to do is check and see if I is less than the number of elements. And if that's true, go execute these statements I have here. And at the end of it, do this statement, which is increment I by one, and go back and do the test. Now this is never gonna be revisited. Go back and do the test. And then if I is still less than the length of the array, do my statement, run this function of incrementing i and then go back and do the test and keep doing that and of course we see it though eventually i is going to have a value that's equal to the length of the array and of course of a slice array and of course we're going to not go into the statement and that's going to be that the for loop is going to exit so what do we want to do we can do fmt that print len print just like we did with um array and we can say um let's print out uh i and then we'll do a fat arrow, and then we're gonna do nums um, of i, and then um, maybe we wanna put some spaces between them. Uh, let's do new line, okay. It's a very short array, so that's fine. And so I'm gonna let that save. I'm gonna go over here and do go run main, and exactly as we expect, right? The index and the value. And there's nothing much to say about that. I mean, if you did it four loops in chapter two, and then you did four loops iteration of um, an array in chapter three, then this is no surprising. And what I'm gonna show next is, ne is not a surprise either. And so the next one is how we do iteration using the range operator, our range function. And it's gonna be again for i and v or values. So our index and value. And then we're gonna range over nums and we're just gonna do the exact same thing. And now, if we let that save, uh, why am I getting, oh, uh, I'm not using, V is not being used, so here, bam. So now I don't have to specifically reference my array. I have V now, that represents the value of it, and now when I run this, you can see they both look the exact same. As a matter of fact, you can't tell the difference. So if I do fmt that print ln and then I do some a line between the two, then maybe now um, you can see the difference. 
uh, let's hit save and then uh, this is supposed to be a string um, come on let's make this a string and again let it save and I run it and there you go right both the same okay and so of course same thing if you don't want the index just use an underscore as a replace placeholder variable um, and of course it means ignore that index but if what you want is just the index and not the value well sure you can use two variables like this i comma underscore but you can just save yourself the extra type in and simply use just the index variable alone and the range function will just return you the index and you can save yourself the extra type in by not having to type comma underscore for a placeholder value. There you go. Right, so that just gives you I alone. But the minute you put two parameters, then you must specify which one you want. So uh, if you just want V, then this makes sense to do this. Okay. And there you go. All right. So if it's just one parameter, then it's always the index. And if it's two, it's um, index and value. And if you don't want the index, then you have to specify the value. Okay. So that's pretty much it in terms of iteration and using the range function. Um, I hope you're enjoying the material. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for spreading the word. Thank you for taking your time to come back and sit with me and go through this. And of course, thank you for your feedback. Um, take care, continue to spread the word, and see you in the next video. All right, bye.